It's new product time. New, 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 new. Okay. New, 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 new. So let's do this. First up, this is a back in stock. Oh, back in stock. Yeah, what are these? Enemometer is a wind speed sensor. It's kind of a nice one, too. Yeah. Not, for detecting wind speed. Not motorized spoons like I initially thought they were. So no, we, it's not we, for eating we, your uh, <laughs> cereal faster. Yeah, this is. It's an automated, like ice cream, automated ice cream scooper. No. Okay. Um, this is also uh, back Cupcade in stock. Cupcake is updated and back in stock. It is now um, uh, out of beta. It's now much easier to build. Uh, you no longer have to build a circuit board on. Um, build the, the interface circuit on a Perma Proto, and so there's a custom circuit board that we make and we manufacture. So the soldering is really minimal. So it takes a couple hours less. It takes like an hour yeah. less or an hour or two less to, to do it, and a lot less uh, complicated. It's basically just solder some wires directly in now, from, and like a lot less, and then like the um, buttons plug in directly. Okay. So it's super cute. And we released a new image that also has NES support. Wow. So like uh, we have a Zelda screenshot. Yeah, I got some it's screenshots. Which one? I don't know one. if I have all of them. Yep, that one. Click it. Click it. Right. Click it. Click it. No. Click it. It doesn't. It doesn't want to go. Doesn't want to go. No, we got problems over here. But you just showed it. No. No, there's issues. What happens if you have next arrow? I I can't. There's no. It doesn't. It doesn't work away. What? No. Anybody, okay. We, keep moving. Okay. It, it did work. Next up. Uh, okay, so we have that. And uh, wait, we don't. Okay, can you? We gotta keep moving. Um, so check that out. Uh, we've sold out of the cupcakes, but um, we'll have uh, like 50 more made like later this week. Okay. And next up. Okay, next up. We have a extra large uh, tactile, um, not tactile, uh, shoot, what's the word? I have to look at the packaging to remember what it's called. It's called a large transducer. Sonic reducer? It's a, so no, sonic, <laughs> it's a sonic reducer. It's a transducer. So this is um, a, it's a coil wrapped around a special kind of metal that when electricity, uh, electric field goes through it, it expands and contracts. And so you uh, press it up against a surface to turn that surface into a speaker. So it's a, a speaker surface transducer. It's kind of like the bone conduction transducer we have, except it's like really big, way too big to be used on bones. It's like this big. Um, it's often used in like, um, these like portable speakers that's like you put it on the table and it's got this little rubber pad that's the, that's the white pad on top and you press, you, you basically uh, have it face down on the table and it'll vibrate the table. So yeah, you can use it just like any other four ohm, five watt speaker. We have a bunch of amplifiers that work really well with it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this is a large version. We have the medium and, and teeny and now big. So all, all sizes for all your transducing needs. Okay, next up. I like this one. This Foam is my, pads. one of my favorite new new products. This is a classic um, product. It's actually kind of it was hard for us to find a good source for this because uh, you know they're not really made too much anymore. It's a classic phone pad from old style phones, and this one has um, like headers attached already on it. So you just plug it into a breadboard, and it has a, this kind of standard three by five, uh, three by four buttons. So that's twelve buttons, one through zero, and then star and pound. Um, it's multiplex, so you use seven pins, so you can read the columns and the rows. You can see here that the, there's three columns and four rows, and then when the button is pressed, it shorts those little gold fingers together. And uh, so you have to use like a scanning program or a library to use it. There's an Arduino library called a like, keypad or key scan or something that we link to, and it works really, really well. Just like use that, and you can just like when it, you know, read the button press, um, it can detect it. And uh, we're gonna maybe do some phone projects with this, but we also just thought it's kind of fun. We have like a flexi version that's a little bit uh, less expensive, but this is kind of has an old style tactile feel, which I really yeah. like. Okay. It also has the uh, letters printed above the numbers, which I like. Just look at it. Just look at it. Just look at it. Isn't okay. that desirable? Except no. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, mini. USB A plug. So this is a sort of a DIY plug if you want to make your own USB cables. We have these in a bunch of different uh, styles and sizes. This one is the super slim uh, A type socket. Yeah. And it's just like, a, you know, the other ones we have snapped together in half. This one slides into the end. So it's kind of a little bit more elegant looking. It's just like, you know, modern style connector if you want to make your own connectors. But uh, once in a while you have to do like a weird thing. You have to splice a USB cable or, or connect to something or your process, your microcontroller has USB host but you don't have a plug for it. So this is, allows you to, to wire one directly. Um, also maybe like you want to make your own minty boost on these you can plug in. Um, like a 5 volt power supply, you want to plug plug in anything with USB, switch power, any, anything like that. Uh, this is your 
Do what connector? It's one of those handy things that when you need it, you don't have it. And you're like, if I only had it. Yeah, I just hate splicing USB cables because yeah. they're always, it's just like a pain. The wires are really thin. This just makes it like really easy and yeah. uh, less splicing. Okay. It's like a buck. All right, next up. Now, before I move on, a little special shout out to Alon here. Uh, one of the folks on our new product team is getting really good at making animated GIFs. We have an internal learning guide. This is why all of our new products have GIFs right now. It's awesome. Anyways, this gives you, I, I like these because it immediately shows you the front and back of a front, photo. Back, front, front, back, of the back, product. front, back, yeah. front. This front, is a uh, SMA, edge, SMA Edge Launch. I don't know if that's the official word, but that's kind of what DigiKey describes it as. Um, and this is used when you want to put an SMA RF connector on a PCB, and you don't want it to stick up, you want it to stick out. And you also don't want it to like be super bulky. I like these, they're, they're slim. They're very easy to solder. Um, this is an SMA classic, not RPSMA, but uh, we have an SMA to RPSMA adapter, so you can use that if you want to adapt to RPSMA. Um, if you go um, next. Next? Yeah. Okay. Next. We have some still boring photos. Yeah, these are some boring. boring. So that's exciting, and then yeah, you can see the back. <laughs> so it, it hugs the edge of a circuit board. I have a photo. And yeah, let's show that photo. Yeah, it's not yeah. animated though. It's not animated. It's not animated, and um, it only shows it from the edge. But it's basically like the the legs are hugging the the edge of the board, and it slides on, and then you just solder it in place. So, I mean, it's I, I'm not like these. They're 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 fairly low cost, and they're easy to solder. And yeah. uh, I use them for a bunch of projects, and you know they don't take up a lot of board real estate. Like, like what type of projects? This is a clock a controllable clock oscillator. And when would you use that? Um, this is for like if you wanted if you want to do like SDR, um, like software defined radio, yeah. or you want to um, have like an oscillator, and you want or you want to have uh, something that uses RF, and you want to connect an antenna. So this must mean you're working on something soon that uses this. Maybe. This is what we call leading the engineer in the business. <laughs> you're allowed to lead the engineer. Yeah. I'm lead free. Next up. <laughs> oh, good one. Good, good. All right. Pybrella. You always tell me like, you have to, I have to rush these. I'm going to rush these now. Um, this is the Pybrella from, from Pi Maroni. It's a fully assembled little add-on board for a Raspberry Pi. It has a little kind of motor driver type thing going on. It has three LEDs. It has a piezo buzzer. Um, it has a button. It's, it's all good fun. It has a USB, which I actually don't know what the, the USB connector does. Um, and there's just tutorials online about what you can do with it. It's just a little add-on um, for the Raspberry Pi. It's meant to be a low-cost sort of physical computing interactivity yeah. thing. So, Pybrella. It's cool. And uh, Pi Maroni, if you're watching this in the UK or anywhere in Europe, um, if you want to get most of Adafruit stuff, Pi Maroni has pretty much all of it. They're becoming one of our biggest resellers yeah. in Europe. Also, all this stuff will show up in uh, Pi Maroni's shop in like two weeks. Yeah. New, also, new today, but old tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, next up. We just put this in the store today. Yes. This is the DIY sensor kit. It's a DIY foam sensor kit that was actually, it was on Kickstarter, and it was a successful Kickstarter that um, the person was like, hey, you know, I, I still have a bunch of these kits, and I think people still want them. Would you like to sell them? I was like, yeah, sure. And it's basically um, the engineer who designed this kit worked at a company that makes the film, and it's a little bit like Velostat. It's a pressure-sensitive film, which is also basically used in, like, any force sensitive resistor or, or force sensor. Um, this is like a thick film and then you also get, um, I can go back, back to, you, you get a three inch by four inch piece of the film, which is the black stuff, uh, thick aluminum foil, not like the aluminum foil you use at, in like a home, it's like really tough stuff, like industrial aluminum foil, and then two clear poly sheets. And then what you can do is you can cut it to any size you want. So if you want like a long thin sensor, or you want like a round sensor, or a square sensor, or like a foot shaped sensor, whatever you want, um, you cut it and then you, you sandwich it together, and then can you go uh, two steps? And then um, this is a sensor, and then when you squeeze it, it um, the resistance goes down. So I think it goes down to like, I don't remember, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think it ranges from like yeah. 100K to one mega ohm, I think, about-ish, depending on how hard you squeeze it. Okay. Yeah, I like the um, kits and projects that we're putting in the store that are post-Kickstarter successes that have already shipped to their backers. Yeah. We have a little bit of an issue. We have a popular blog and 
you have a lot of Twitter followers, fans, Google Plus folks, and people really want us to promote their Kickstarters, but there's a lot of Kickstarters that don't make it. So what we've said is, we'll wait until... Also, like, I don't know, I don't know for sure that um, the, the Kickstarters are... Um they're like real. I, mean, yeah. I don't know if they're going to actually yeah. fulfill. So what we've said is like, hey, after your Kickstarter has <clears throat> been fulfilled and the backers got their stuff. Everybody, all the backers are satisfied. That, that, then we can write about it and we'd also like to stock it if it's successful. Yeah. So this is a good example. Yeah, we have like that. six or seven yeah. now, which is, it's a really great way to, you know, get stuff to yeah. your um, backers. And then after you're done, maybe you have some product left over. Or maybe you're like, that worked out and I want to have a continuous source because a Kickstarter is like yeah. a kind of one-shot deal. Okay. Next up. You just released this like, a couple days ago. A couple days ago. UV this sensor. This is a UV sensor that uses like the uh, Guva 123 or 321 something sensor. It's a photodiode UV sensor. And um, it's it's unlike the Scilab sensor. The Scilab sensor doesn't actually have a UV element in it, but it has other, it has a full spectrum and it can like calibrate to figure out like what the UV index is. This is actually a true UV sensor. That little white square thing that's like like right there is a, um, is a is a UV photo dot. It's actually basically a true UV LED, but like run backwards. Although I don't know if it can actually emit UV light, but it basically it will detect UV light and turn that into a voltage. But the voltage is really really small. It's like microvolts. And so there's an op amp, which is like the black five legged thing next to it, and um, that has a it's a real to op amp that amplifies the little current that comes out of the photodiode and makes it you know up to like three volts or whatever depending on how much UV. Um, three volts out would be a lot of UV. So I, do. I if that happens, then maybe you should run for cover. But um, it can detect uh, UV light from the sun, from a UV lamp, uh, and it's like true UV, not not like purple UV that you get from LEDs, but like like not eye visible detectable UV. So um, we tested this with a, a reptile lamp. Like reptiles apparently need to have like UV lamps if they're indoors because they need uh, UV to generate like vitamins and stuff. So um, just if you want to test this, you actually have to take it outside to test it. You can't test it with a UV LED, it doesn't work. I tried and it was like a couple hours of like, why isn't my sensor working? Um, but this is an analog output. It uh, gives you about 0.1 volts per UV index. So if it's 0.5 volts out, UV index of five. That's it. Super okay. simple. Much simpler to use than the Scilabs sensor for sure. All right. Next up, uh, we've got uh, a few different colors of these. So what I thought yeah. I would do is I would show the different we have colors. Two, we have two colors right now yeah. of the 14-segment alphanumeric duals. So these are dual LEDs that you, you they, each package has two digits. Each digit has 14 segments. So it's great for alphanumeric displays, and we'll show uh, it showing alphanumeric. But for now, you can just look at this like beautiful like starburst style. Um, this is the red. It's a it's a very nice bright red. Um, maybe I'll show it on the overhead at the same time as the. Uh, yeah, you want to show it on the overhead? Version? Okay, maybe I'll. Yeah, let me grab this. Quick. Quick. To the overhead. Yeah. Okay. Is the overhead on? Yeah, it's on. Okay. Do your thing. Okay, so this is. This is this blue. This is the blue one. And then let me see if I can get the red one. Yes, yeah, so they, right. come in, they come in a pack of, yeah, they're super bright. Yeah, it's hard to focus because it's just like too bright. Um, that's the blue one. And then I'm going to swap it out for a red one. And that's the red one. So you can see these are like super, super bright. Um, yeah. And we're going to get other colors, but these are the only colors that I approved for the first shipment because they were bright enough. And they're you know, I want to make sure that they're like nice and bright. So um, you, yeah, there's two digits and 14 segments. So you need a lot of pins to control these. Um, so that's why we made a backpack, and we actually released it at the same time as a backpack because it's only that super <coughs> useful with a backpack yeah. to help so, control it. Um, we have some other photos I wanted to show. So this okay. is what they look like when they're not plug plugged in and yeah, and uh, you know, making your eyes all boggly. Yeah. So here they are. This is the different pieces here. Okay, and you want to move on to the next one? Yeah. Okay. So next up, um, this is the backpack. Backpack. So seconds. since you want to have at least four letter words, um, with the backpack we made has four digits, so you get the two of the dual displays in one backpack, and it uses I squared C, so you can use two pins, and just about any microcontroller can use it. These are like super, super simple to control over I squared C. 
Uh, and we have a library, and you can stack up to eight of them by changing the address on the back. There's a little address changey thingy. And we wrote Arduino code that has a font table, so like it has basically every printable ASCII character. We you know converted it to um, 14 segment. And if yeah, you can see here the demo for A, B, and C. You can look on the overhead, and I can I can show it really fast for the backpack. So yeah, just this is our little demo that just goes between the oh, great. Starburst and ABCD. So it just uses two pins, powered from five volts. Actually, I'm powered from three volts right now, and it works really good. Um, it's still really bright. Five volts is even yeah. better, and you know you can dim the whole display if you if you think it's too bright. So we'll have some fun projects that use these, and then hopefully we'll get some more colors as well. But this is fun because it's like. You want to use like these displays, but you need like 28 pins or something like insane um, to control these, um, especially the 14 segments, just because like, so many segments add up. And uh, so this is a, a nice solution; it's low cost, and you can get alphanumeric. Okay, but wait, there's more. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. What about it? Look at this. What about it? Look at these. They're bar graphs. Bar graphs. We got them. <laughs> we has them. Let me okay. get the bar so what graph. are these? So we have, um, wait, let me get these bar graphs. So we actually had bar graph displays before. We had the blue, the white, pure green, and amber already. And then, because um, those were I, I approved and those came in the first shipment, but then I also wanted, to, I also approved the red, yellow, and yellow green. But uh, those didn't show up till today, and now these are bright enough that I'm like, yay! Like these are cool to sell. I think these are bright enough because I, I don't like it when the if you if you like power them from like the back, like 20 milliamps per um, segment. I want them to be like nice and vivid. Okay. Um, they're a little more expensive for us, but you know whatever. Okay. Um, so, so we got these photos. Yeah. This is what they look like when they uh, when you hold still and take a photo of them. Yeah. That's fun. And then um, here's it looks some. Like this. And it's just 10 LEDs. Yeah. So it's like. The, all the anodes are on one side, all the cathodes are on the other side, and it's like super simple. So maybe we'll go to the overhead. I actually yeah. have a demo of um, that also shows this this um, flexi film stuff. Yeah. So when I push it's, it, uh, oh. yeah, move it out of the yeah, area. Yeah. yeah, if I push it, it, it's like a strength detector too. Yeah. Um, so this is the blue matrix that we had before, and then let me change this out. Now what's cool is I can see what's underneath that um, proto shield. And there's two unreleased Adafruit products, and uh, they're really cool. And I can't tell you what they are yet, um, but they're... Wow, you're kind of like a, kind of a jerk. I'm not a jerk. This is but red. But I can see it from here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, there's two, a hint. No, there's yeah. no power. Yeah. How's that, How's that even possible? How's it even possible? Yeah. Um, okay, so yes, yeah, so this is the red. So I'm going to squeeze, 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 so you can see this, a nice bright red. And then let me demo also, which one is this? This one is yellow. And the yellow is a little, the yellow and the amber are kind of similar, but the yellow is a teeny bit yellower. Uh, like, it's kind of hard to tell exactly how much yellower, but it is, wait, it's backwards. Okay, there you go. It's okay to plug it in backwards, because um, the, you know, the anode and the cathode just get reversed. It's, it's okay, but yeah. it won't light up. So that's yellow, nice yellow color. And then finally, one second, light green. So we have the pure green. The pure green is like the um, uh, al, al in ga the gallium arsenic uh, formulation of the LEDs. And this one is the non one. I don't remember exactly which formulation, but this one's a little yellower green. The other one's like a pure, like 3.4 Gallium volt. arsenic is the lead singer of uh, Sacrificial Pixel. <laughs> It start like a metal band. Yeah. In your LED hat. Yeah. Um, and this is a yellow green. So the pure green is like a more of like a bright, vivid green, and it's more of like a grass green. But it's a little like expensive and like, I don't know. Some people want a lower voltage. If you want to run off a 3.3 volt, this one's better because it'll you'll actually it'll be brighter because the um, four voltage is like 2.3 volts, not 3.4 volts. Yeah. Okay. E. I think that's it, right? Yeah. Squeeze. Excellent showing, Lady Ada. Okay. So that was new products, folks.